Hi there, LinkedIn family. Jonathan here from Some Talented People. We're doing a series this week where we're actually going to look at some practical uh, uh, methods that people have implemented when they're trying to bring themselves out of mental health struggle. And these are survivor techniques. We kicked off today with CR Holmes, who is producing a um, depression and suicide movie and requires funding and distributors. So we'll listen to him uh, now. How you doing? Um, I'm CR and some of you guys don't know me, but I am the CEO and founder of Shadow and Vision Models. And we're here as a group. Uh, thanks everybody, Jonathan, Christy, Andy, uh, for joining us. Uh, we're going to be here talking about mind health. Uh, that's the whole point and goal of things. Um, we want to get this into the general public um, discussion. You know, we talk about things like cancer, we talk about things like heart disease, but nobody, nobody dared talk about that. Oh my God, mind health. Um, and that I really don't want to do anything. Uh, let's stop hiding it. Let's stop putting it underneath the underneath the carpet and let's get it out in the open. Because guess what? One in three people in Canada and the United States has a, a mind health issue, you know, and uh, it's no different here in China. I'm living in China right now and we have the same issues here. Um, I was, uh, how did this all start? Um, I, my general goal is to connect talent with various different avenues, uh, whether it be movies or commercials or et cetera, et cetera. That's what I connect talent to their needs. And then I had somebody in the movie industry come to me and say, hey, <clears throat> how you doing? Uh, we know that you're white. I uh, guess what, I'm in China, I'm white. It's pretty obvious. obvious. Uh, <laughs> I'm in China, I'm white, it's pretty obvious. Um, and you speak English and you also have connections in the industry in the United States. And, uh, we're wondering if you can help us at the time. I'm thinking, okay, you would want an actor, somebody that's big. Um, so I was like, okay, what do you need? They're like, well, um, we have this depression, um, awareness film that we need your help with. And I'm like, okay, well, this is really interesting because I have a, history of depression and I have uh, two of my classmates that uh, you know ended their lives with suicide and I had my sister's classmate who was only 12 also and her life with suicide so I said well this is really really up my alley it's really what I'm interested in and at the time the company had already uh, got funding from the Chinese government so the Chinese government is behind this um, uh, quite a bit which I'm very happy with. And um, they also have, um, they also have CCTV coverage coming from behind this too, which is really, really good. So we had that uh, going and they said, can you help us get more funding? Because we need to finish our production. At the time it wasn't done. And we need to finish uh, our post-production and we need to have a distributor. So I did work with them and I've been doing that for like the last mm, two months or so. And you gotta, um, you gotta know, uh, what happened was, um, the director's classmate, this is how this all started. The director's classmate committed suicide and that's unfortunate, but you have to know a little bit of Chinese culture to understand the situation. Uh, they're very, very close here, extremely close. Um, you know, it's very unusual for families to break up. It's very unusual for uh, classmates to break up um, because they just have a very, very close culture. You know, it's not unusual for somebody who's 30 to live with their parents, mm -hmm. very normal. Here it's, what? You're crazy if you live with your parents when you're 30. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of different culture. And in classmates, um, if, your classmate commits suicide, you're partly at fault because it's your classmate. You're not looking after your classmate. So it's your fault. And that's kind of the culture. Uh, they're very, very close in that way, which has created um, a bit of an issue on itself, right? They all feel guilty mm. because their classmate committed suicide. So they felt that they wanted her 
death to mean something, not just be forgotten, not just disappear, mm -hmm. right? As so many things happen like that. So they decided they would make a movie about it. And that's what this is about. It's about this girl's struggle and what they did. And it was pieced together. It's a real life story. Uh, uh, pieced together from everybody's different perspective on who this classmate was mm -hmm. so and their family so they have a pretty good idea of all of what happened and they want to show hey this is what happened and this is where it came from and in the end they want to show how we can avoid this and how we can prevent this and how we can heal um, as a group and as people and as individuals because that's the that's really the main key, I think. Um, Can I ask you, you uh, in, in your, so you've been there for a couple of months now, in your estimation, so for example, um, you know, I'm half Nigerian. In Nigeria, you can't be gay or mentally unwell in any way, or you're ostracized. And that's true of a lot of cultures. Do you think this film will affect the Chinese culture or is it a show to say, oh, we have emotions? Actually, I think that's a big, that's a really good question. I really think that that's um, something that's really key is because the government's so far behind this, mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to affect the culture a lot more than a lot of people are really expecting. Um, and I think it's a, I really think it's a positive step from the Chinese government saying, hey, listen, we are going to support people who have mind health issues. Indeed. Because here, just like it is, I, 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 you said I've been here for a couple of months. I've been working on this particular project for a couple of months. I've been in China for six years now. Oh, wow. Okay. So Fair I'm, I'm, I'm pretty aware of their culture now, and I'm pretty deep into it. Uh, I understand it fairly well. Not 100%, I'm not, not Chinese. Yeah, not, not yet. You're working on it. Uh, Chris, on it. <laughs> Christy or Andy, do you have any questions for CR? Well, I might just comment on on your last question about how, what is the bias around mental health is what we call a lot of it in the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. Is mental health. What we have found is calling it mental wellness or mental and emotional wellness really gives a, a greater understanding of, hey, I'm having an emotional reaction or I'm experiencing life and choosing to feel it. I need to have tools and self-management, self-awareness. I need to understand this better so I can prevent mental health. Indeed, right? very I good mean, point. Very good so point. Um, we're actually going to run out of time. I'm sorry, Christy uh, and uh, CR. Uh, do you uh, just want to uh, speak out for what you're looking for specifically for people now? Well, uh, looking for anybody who can connect us to uh, a distributor, an online distributor here in the West, uh, North America, anywhere. And we're also looking for any investors that uh, are willing to put in a little, a little piece, uh, even uh, a little bit. So how much? Are you, how much are you looking for? Total. The total uh, left is three hundred thousand U.S. dollars, um, but we had a starting budget of five million, and we've already gained four point seven million from Brilliant. all of our funding. So we've Brilliant. already got four point seven million soft funds. Okay. All right. See you. Thank you very much indeed. I'm sorry to cut you off there, but we have.